The 156 Story Treehouse by Andy Griffiths and illustrated by Terry Denton. Chapter 1 The 156 Story Treehouse. Hi, my name is Andy. This is my friend Terry. We live in a tree. Well, when I say tree, I mean tree house. And when I say tree house, I don't just mean any old tree house. I mean a 156 story tree house. It used to be a 143 story tree house, but we've added another 13 stories. So what are you waiting for? Come on up! We've added a bouldering alley. It's just like bowling except use boulders instead of balls. Teehee! Terry, how many times have I told you? Only one boulder at a time. A wishing well? I wish we had a wishing well. We do. Yay, I got my wish. An aquarium wonderland. Home of Quasjex the stunt axolotl. An old boot camp. I kicked the winning goal in the 2005 Grand Final. An Enigma engine. A world record breaking level. The amazing mind reading sandwich making machine. It knows exactly what sort of sandwich you want and makes it for you. A TV quiz show level hosted by Quizzy. The Quizzical Quizbot. A Lost Property Office. A Lost Sausage Office. Spoontopia. A Super Stinky Stuff Level. And a Billions of Birds Level. As well as being a home, the treehouse is where we make books together. I write the words and Terry draws the pictures. As you can see, we've been doing this for quite a while now. Squawk! Things can get a bit crazy from time to time. Uh-oh! Whack! Whack! Grrr! Uh-oh! Grrr! Uh-oh! Grrr! Uh-oh! Uh-oh, but we always get our book done in the end. Stomp! Chapter 2. Happy Holidays If you're like most of our readers, you're probably wondering what holidays we celebrate in the treehouse. Well, we celebrate all the holidays there are, and even some there aren't. Uh-oh, take a chance day, kiss a frog day, underpants on your head day, cow over the moon day, popping popcorn with the lid off day, Christmas day, jump off a mountain day, cheer up your nose day, my and Terry's birthday, Jill's birthday, swallow a car day, Gingerbread Day Easter Stay in bed all day day Sorry, just can't do it Be nice to Andy all day day Big Bad Wolf Day Hey, says Terry, remember how last year on Big Bad Wolf Day that Big Bad Wolf came to the treehouse instead Andy and Terry, let me come in. Knock, knock. 
And we said, no, 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 it bought the hair on our chinny chin chins. But the wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your tree house down. And then he huffed and he puffed and he blew the tree house down. Clunk. How could I forget, I say, especially since exactly the same thing happens every year on Big Bad Wolf Day. And remember that time on Gingerbread Day, says Terry, when we made a gingerbread Terry and a gingerbread Andy and a gingerbread Jill and how they were cooling down on the tray when suddenly they all jumped up and said, Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch us with the gingerbread gang. And we ran, and we ran. Hee hee, and we ran. We're running, and we ran. Still running, and we ran. <sighs> And we ran. <sighs> hee hee. And we ran as fast as we could, but they were right. We couldn't catch them. You can't catch us. <sighs> How could I forget, I say. The same thing happens every year on Gingerbread Day. I've got an idea, says Terry. How about next gingerbread day, we make gingerbread cars as well, and then when the gingerbread gang run away, we'll be able to catch them. Rats. I'm sure that's cheating. Great plan, I say. We'll definitely do that next gingerbread day. But tonight, in case you've forgotten, is the night before Christmas, and we've still got a lot to do. I haven't forgotten, says Terry. I've been working on the Christmas lights. How many have you done so far? I say. Um, says Terry, let me see. Six million fifty five thousand four hundred and eighty nine. One for each leaf. And how many have you got to go? One, says Terry. I'll just do it now. Terry climbs to the top rung of the ladder and places a light on the only leaf that doesn't already have one. Ta-da, he says. Great job, I say. The tree looks really Christmassy. Thanks, Andy, says Terry. He slides down the ladder and lands beside me. I love Christmas. Me too, I say. Chapter 3 Mr. Big Nose Calling Ring, ring, ring. In case you don't know, that's the sound of our 3D video phone. It's what a publisher, Mr. Big Nose, always calls on to remind us that our next book is due. Flap, flap. Ring, ring, ring. Don't answer it, Andy, says Terry. It's probably Mr. Big Nose calling to remind us that the next book is due. Nah, I say, we only just finished our last book and our next book isn't due for... Um, uh, actually, I can't remember, but it's not for ages. Then he must be ringing to wish us Merry Christmas, says Terry. Let's answer it. And before I can stop him... Terry answers the phone. Click. No! What took you so long to answer? Says Mr. Big Nose. I'm a busy man, you know. We know, I say. But we're busy, too. We're getting ready for Christmas. C 
Christmas, says Mr. Big Nose. Bah, humbug. I don't believe in Christmas. I'm too busy. I'm calling to remind you that your next book is due tomorrow. Tomorrow, I say. Tomorrow, says Terry. Tomorrow, says Mr. Big Nose. I had to bring the deadline forward. Tomorrow? But tomorrow's Christmas Day, I say. That's not important, says Mr. Big Nose. What's important is that it's the day your book is due. No, you don't understand, says Terry. It's Christmas Day. We'll be celebrating Christmas. You'll be celebrating Christmas in the monkey house if you don't get your book written, says Mr. Big Nose. But we hate monkeys, I say. Me too, says Mr. Big Nose. But you know what I hate even more? Not getting my book on time. That's what. A deadline is a deadline, so you'd better get it to me tomorrow by 9am and not a moment later. The screen goes blank. But we can't write a book, says Terry. It's getting late and we haven't even written our letters to Santa yet. I know, I say, but Mr. Big Nose doesn't care. You heard him. He doesn't even believe in Christmas. All he cares about is getting his book on time. All right, says Terry, sighing. But let's write our Santa letters first and then write our book. I don't think that's such a good idea, I say. We'll end up getting distracted, and when I say we, I mean you. You will end up getting distracted, and we won't get our book done. I promise I won't get distracted, says Terry. I definitely, positively, absolutely, totally, completely, utterly won't... Um, uh, what was I saying again? You're telling me that you won't get distracted, I say. But you got distracted in the middle of telling me you won't get distracted. Sorry, says Terry. What were you saying? Never mind. Come on, Andy. Let's have a little fun. It's Christmas. I know it's Christmas, I say. But I think we should have book first and write a Santa letter second. No, says Terry, I think we should do our book second and write our Santa letters first. No, I shout, book first, Santa letters second. No, shouts Terry, book second, Santa letters first. Book, letters, book, letters, book, letters. Okay, I say. You win. We'll do our Santa letters first and then write our book. Yay, says Terry. You won't regret it. I will if we end up in the monkey house, I say. I hate monkeys. So do I, says Terry. But I love Christmas. Yay! Chapter 4 Lists, stockings and carols. We each grab a pencil and some paper. I'm not sure how to start, says Terry. I think for a moment. I'm going to write. Dear Santa, I have been very good this year. For Christmas I would like. And then just list all the things I want. Me too, says Terry, and he starts writing as fast as he can. I bet you can't guess what I put at the top of my list, says Terry. Bet you I can, I say. All right then, says Terry. What? An electric pony, I say. That's right, says Terry, but how did you know? Because I read in your diary... That that's what you want for Christmas, I say. You shouldn't be reading my diary, says Terry. It's private. 
How was I supposed to know that? I say. Because it always says so on the cover, says Terry. Look, Terry's top secret private diary. Andy, keep out. Now looking. This means you, Andy. It doesn't have a lock on it, I say. Then I'm going to add a top secret private diary lock to my Santa list, says Terry. A lock won't stop me, I say. I'll just ask Santa for a key to open it. And I'm also going to ask him for a jetpack. Jetpacks are cool, says Terry. I'm going to ask for one too. But that's copying, I say. No, it's not, says Terry, because I'm going to ask for an invisible jetpack. Invisible jetpack? I say, I didn't even know there was such a thing. I'm going to add it to my list as well, okay? Sure, says Terry. As long as you promise not to ask Santa for a key to open my top secret private diary lock. Deal, I say, adding an invisible jetpack to my list. We can go invisible jetpacking together. You'd better ask for an electric pony as well, says Terry, just in case Santa doesn't come through with the invisible jetpacks. Thanks, I say. Good idea. We keep writing our lists. They get longer and longer and longer and longer until we can't think of anything else to ask Santa for. I think I'm finished, says Terry. Me too, I say. Our lists are quite long, though. I hope Santa will be able to fit all these presents into a Christmas stockings. He sure will, says Terry. Thanks to these endlessly expandable Christmas stockings I invented. They're just like regular stockings, but no matter how many presents you put into them, they keep expanding. High five, I say to Terry. Let's hang up our endlessly expandable stockings and then get started on our book. Wait, says Terry. We haven't sung any Christmas. But we always sing Christmas carols on Christmas Eve, says Terry. It's tradition. And before I can stop him, he starts singing at the top of his voice. Jingle bells and he smells silky flew away. Father Christmas lost his whiskers and penguins ate his sleigh. Chomp. Keep your voice down, Terry, I say. If Santa hears you singing that, he won't get any presents. Why not, says Terry. Because it's not a proper Christmas carol. It's not, says Terry. No, I say. A proper Christmas carol is something like the 12 days of Christmas. All right, I'll sing that then, says Terry. On the first day of Christmas, my best friend gave to me a penguin in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my best friend gave to me two turtle penguins and a penguin in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my best friend gave to me three French penguins, two turtle penguins, and a penguin in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my best friend gave to me four calling penguins, three French penguins, two turtle penguins, and a penguin in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my best friend gave to me five golden pen. Stop! I shout. What's the matter? says Terry. You don't like that one? No, I say. Too many penguins. Okay, then, 
says Terry. How about Silent Night? Yes, I say. That's a much better choice. Terry starts singing. Silent night, holy night. Penguins are black with a bit of white. They like to eat fish, chomp, and they waddle about. The slim ones are thin and the fat ones are stout. Sleep in penguinly peace. Sleep in penguinly peace. Terry, I shout. The sooner you stop singing penguin-themed Christmas carols, the sooner we can get our book written and the sooner we can get to bed and the sooner it will be Christmas. Calm down, Andy, says Terry. I finished singing. The sooner you stop shouting, the sooner we can get our book written and the sooner we can get to bed and the sooner it will be Christmas. So stop shouting and let's get started right now. Chapter 5 The Mysterious Present Okay, I say. How about we start the book with, Hi, my name is Andy. I've got a better idea, says Terry. How about we start the book with, Hi, my name is Ding Dong. Hi, my name is Ding Dong, I say. What does that even mean? There's nobody called Ding Dong in the book. I know, says Terry. I didn't say my name is Ding Dong. Yes, you did, I say. You just said it again. I didn't, says Terry. I struck to say my name is Ding Dong. Yeah, I get what you're trying to tell me, I say. Hi, my name is Ding Dong, but I don't get it. Who's Ding Dong? The doorbell, says Terry. There's somebody at the door. It might be Santa. No, I say. We're not asleep and besides, he doesn't ring the doorbell, you... Ding dong. That's not very nice, says Terry, calling me a ding dong. I didn't call you a ding dong, I say. It was the doorbell. I think there's somebody at the door. Ding dong. I think you're right, says Terry. Let's go and open it. We take the super fast slide down to the bottom of the tree and open the door. Bill the postman is standing there holding a large package. Wee! Merry Christmas, Andy and Terry, he says. I love what you've done with the tree house. It looks like there's a light on every single leaf. That's because there is, I say. Brilliant, says Bill. Well, I've got a special delivery for you here. I don't know what it is, but it's very cold. Thanks, Bill, I say, taking the very cold parcel from him. See you at our treehouse Christmas party tomorrow. Looking forward to it, he says. See you then. We shut the door, carry the parcel upstairs and put it down in front of the fireplace. Who's it from? says Terry. I don't know, I say. There's no written address. What do you think it is? Maybe it's a present, I say. Oh, goody, says Terry. Let's open it. We tear the paper off, but underneath there's more paper. We rip that paper off, but underneath that there's even more paper. We tear and rip and rip and tear and tear and rip and rip and rip until we come to a box and tear and tear we open the lid and look inside and we see something soft white icy and snowy it's a box full of soft white I see cold snow. Yay, says Terry. I love snow. Let's have a snowball fight. Maybe later, I say. We're supposed to be writing our book, remember? 
Good point, says Terry, but I think you're forgetting one thing. What? I say. To watch out for this, says Terry, and he throws a snowball right at my head. Wump! It hits me in the face and snow gold goes all down the front of my shirt. Okay, you asked for it, I say, gathering up the snow and returning fire. Wump! We both race to the box to reload. And the great Christmas snowball fight begins. We throw snowballs at each other until the box is completely empty. There's snow all over the room now, which is good because it makes it look extra Christmassy. Santa's going to feel right at home. Hey, Andy, says Terry, let's make a Christmas snowman. What about our book, I say. We'll do it right after we make a snowman, says Terry. It won't take long. Come on, help me roll the snow into balls. Okay, I say, but then we write the book. Of course, says Terry. Soon we have three balls of snow, two big ones for the body and a small one for the head. We put the head on top of the body and stick two small branches into the sides to make arms. Great, says Terry. Now all it needs is a face. I push a carrot into the center of the head. That's its nose, I say. And these two pink marshmallows can be its eyes, says Terry. We add twigs for eyebrows and a jelly snake mouth. We wrap a scarf around its neck and put a big black hat on its head. Then we stand back to add Moya Christmas Snowman. What do you think? says Terry. I don't know, I say. It looks kind of angry. I think it's the eyebrows, says Terry. They've slipped down a bit. I'll just fix them. Terry straightens the eyebrows, but they sink down again, this time at a steeper angle, making the snowman look even angrier than before. Terry reaches up to straighten the eyebrows again, when suddenly the snowman opens its jelly snake mouth and says in a gruff voice, Hey, kid, quit messing with me brows. That's how I like him. Chapter 6 The Not Very Christmassy Snowman Normally, I like Christmas snowmen, but not this one. He's not very Christmassy at all. Nice joint you've got here, says the snowman, swiveling his head around. Definitely better than where I come from. I think I'm going to like it here. Now get lost. What do you mean, get lost, I say. We live here. You used to live here, says the snowman, but it's my tree house now. No, it's not, says Terry. It's our tree house. Yours, says the snowman. That's a laugh. It doesn't belong to you. You made it out of the wood you stole from the wreck of Captain Woodenhead's pirate ship. I've read your books. I know all about you. How could he possibly have read our books, I say. We only just made you. The snowman smiles with its jelly snake mouth and says, My grandmother used to read them to me when I was just a little snowboy. That's why I wanted to come here. Your tree house looked like a lot more fun than standing around freezing my base off in Antarctica. So I packed myself in a box and mailed myself here. I knew you two chuckleheads wouldn't be able to resist making a snowman out of a box of snow. And so, here I am. Don't forget to shut the door on your way out, he says. Actually, on second thoughts, leave it open. It's quite warm in here. 
I think it's all those Christmas lights you've hung everywhere. Where's the off switch? There is no off switch, I say. It's Christmas, and if you don't like it, you can go right back to Antarctica. In fact, we'll help you. Terry, let's pack this snowman into his box and send him home. Keep your hot little hands off me, says the snowman, or I'll throw my head at you. You don't scare me, I say, advancing towards him. We'll see about that, snarls the snowman. He reaches up with his twiggy arms, lifts his head off his body, and hurls it right at us. I've got this, yells Terry. He grabs our emergency snow shovel off the wall, steps in front of the hurtling head, and takes a big swing at it. Whap! It's a direct hit! The snowman's head breaks apart and clumps of snow go flying in all directions. Snow long, snowman, says Terry. We high five, jump up and down, and do a victory dance, stomping and splashing in the puddle formed by the rapidly melting snow. But then I hear a rumbling sound. I turn around. Uh Uh-oh. The snowman's body is hurtling towards us at high speed. Watch out, Andy, shouts Terry. Don't worry, I yell. I'll get this one. I pull an emergency flamethrower from an emergency flamethrower dispenser, throw the switch to extra hot and start blasting. Hiss! I keep blasting until the body of the snowman is completely melted. It was nice knowing you, I say. In fact, it's been a real blast. Let that be a lesson to you, says Terry. Now you're nothing but a harmless puddle. That's what you think, says the puddle. I'll get you for this. I found never-ending revenge. You haven't heard the last of me. Suddenly, the air is full of the sound of jingling bells. Oh no, I say. It's Santa. He's coming. But he can't come now, says Terry. We are not asleep, and he only brings presents if you're asleep. We'll just have to pretend, I say. Quick, lie down and shut your eyes. Jingle, jingle. Chapter 7. Crash. We throw ourselves to the floor and pretend to be asleep, just in time. I can hear reindeer snorting, sleigh bells ringing, and Santa ho ho hoing. Whoa, Rudolph! Calls Santa. Slow down, Donner, Blitzen, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Dancer, Dasher, and Prancer. Prepare for a landing in the treehouse down there, in that room where Andy and Terry are sleeping. Santa Claus is going to land right here, whispers Terry. I know, I say, but I'm not sure it's the best place for a landing, given there's an enormous puddle in the middle of the floor. I think we should warn him. No, says Terry. If we warn him, he'll know we're not asleep, and he might not land at all. And if he doesn't land, we won't get any presents. But if we don't warn him, he might crash, I say. Are you trying to tell me that Santa doesn't know how to land his sleigh safely, says Terry? Because I think he does. He's had a lot of practice. Sure, I say, but... Kipak, Lamont, Kaboom, Kalump, Dang, Smash, Clunk. What just happened, whispers Terry. I'm not sure, I say, but judging by that, crash, crack, tingle, bingle, timple, bash, plonk, kaboon, floop, boing, kalump, smash, twang, flonk, snap, plop, flap, ding, clunk, bark, spring, and bang, I'd say Santa just crashed his sleigh. Do you think we can open our eyes now, says Terry? Yes, I say. We open our eyes and look around. Santa's not here says Terry, and neither are presents, I say, our stockings are empty. 
No, you're wrong, Andy, says Terry, peering over the edge of the level. Look, there's a pony down there. Santa Claus brought me an electric pony. That's not an electric pony, I say. That's one of Santa's reindeer. Santa must have hit the puddle when he was landing and skidded over the edge. I think you might be right, says Terry. And it's not the only reindeer down there in the branches. There's lots of them. But where's Santa? I say. Look, says Terry, pointing. He's landed on a branch just above the cloning machine level. Oh no, I say. That's quite a thin branch. Yes, says Terry. And Santa's quite a large man. Yes, I say, and quite heavy. Do you think the branch will break? says Terry. I hope not, I say, but I'm pretty sure it will. There's a creaking sound, creak, followed by a cracking sound, crack. The branch snaps. Snap! Santa falls. Fall. Hits the deck below and bounces straight into the cloning machine. Bounce! It wears to life, and within moments, Jolly Santa clones are marching out of the machine. Ho ho! Ho ho! Ho ho! Ho ho! Ho ho! The Santas are all patting their bellies and saying, Ho ho ho! Ho, 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 ho. Wow, says Terry. Look at all the Santas. Can we keep them, Andy? Can we? Well, I guess we could, I say. Except we can't keep the real Santa. We have to let him go so he can finish delivering all his presents. But which one is the real Santa, says Terry. They all look exactly the same. I guess we'd better go and ask them, I say. Ho, ho, ho. We climb down to the cloning machine level. The Santas are very happy to see us. Merry Christmas, Andy and Terry, they boom. Merry Christmas and welcome to you all, I say. It's great to have so many Santas in the treehouse, but we were just wondering, which one of you is the real Santa Claus? One of the Santa steps forward. I'm the real Santa, he says. Another Santa shoves that Santa aside and says, No, I'm the real Santa. Actually, I think you'll find that I am the real Santa, says the third Santa, using his big round belly to bounce the other two Santas out of his way. The Santas continue to push and jostle one another, and their shouting gets louder and louder and louder, until there's only one thing left for me to do. Chapter 8 Quizzy Gets Quizzing Stop shouting! I shout over the top of the shouting Santas. There's a better way to solve this than shouting. There is? There is? Shouts one of the Santas. Yes, I say, a quiz. We'll get Quizzy, the quizzical robot, to ask you all questions that only the true Santa Claus would know the answers to, and then we'll know which one of you is the real Santa. Q. Who am I? A. I'm Quizzy, of course. Join me soon for a special Quizzy the Quizzical Quizbot show where I try to find out which Santa is the real Santa. Nightly on Treehouse TV. But I already told you. Shouts one of the Santas. I'm the real Santa. No, it's me. Shouts another. I'm the real Santa. No, it's me. I think you'll find that it's me. Shouts a third. Me. 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 Shout the Santas. Okay, okay, I say. Save it for the quiz. Come with us. 
With Terry leading the way, we climb up the tree to the TV quiz show level and lead the Santas onto the set. Welcome, says Quizzy. I'm your host, Quizzy the Quizzical Quizbot. Tonight's special subject is Santa Claus. Please take your places behind the desks, put your hands on the buzzers, and we'll begin. The Santas push and shove their way to the desks, and soon they are all in position, ready to start the show. All right, says Quizzy. Win 13 points for a correct answer. Lose 13 points for a wrong answer. First question. What is Santa's favourite colour? The sound of all the buses going off at the same time is deafening, as all the Santas when they all shout, Red! Buzz! Red! Buzz! Red! You're all correct, says Quizzy. That's 13 points each. Yay, Andy! They all got it right! What? What is the name of Santa's favourite reindeer? says Quizzy. Rudolph! shout the Santas. Correct! says Quizzy. What is Santa's favourite drink? says Quizzy. Milk! shout the Santas. Correct! says Quizzy. What is Terry hoping to get for Christmas? asks Quizzy. An electric pony! shout the Santas. Correct, says Quizzy. Where does Santa live? asks Quizzy. The North Pole! shout the Santas. Correct, says Quizzy. What size boots does Santa wear? asks Quizzy. Extra large, shout the Santas. Correct, says Quizzy. What is the sound of Santa's laugh? Asks Quizzy. Ho, 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 shout the Santas. Correct, says Quizzy. Are you the real Santa Claus? Asks Quizzy. Yes, shout the Santas. Correct, says Quizzy. Well, says Quizzy, it appears all our contestants are tied on 104 points. There's only one way to resolve this. A belly bounce off. The last Santa standing will be the real Santa. Let the great belly bounce off begin. Uh Uh-oh. The Santas all puff themselves up and begin belly bouncing one another as hard as they can. Bounce, 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 boing, blam, biff. The Santas belly bounce each other so hard, in fact, that they knock themselves out and all end up slumped in a big pile on the floor. Well, that didn't solve anything, says Terry. There's no Santa left standing, so we still don't know which one is real. At that moment, I hear the unmistakable sound of flying cats whooshing through the air, and Jill zooms down out of the sky in a flying cat sleigh. Chapter 9 Jill to the Rescue Oh my goodness, says Jill. I love how you've decorated the tree this year. A twinkling light on every leaf, a plastic reindeer hanging from the branches, and a huge pile of inflatable Santas. The tree house looks amazing. Thanks, I say. But they're not decorations. They're real reindeer and real Santas. Real? says Jill. What do you mean? Well, I say... Those reindeer are actually Santa's reindeer, and one of the Santas is the actual Santa. The others are clones. Santa crashed his sleigh and fell into the cloning machine. And then all the Santas had a big belly bounce off to see which one of them was the real Santa, says Terry. But they ended up just knocking each other out. But it's Christmas Eve, says Jill. Santa should be out delivering presents. We know, 
says Terry. The children of the world are going to be so sad if they wake up and find the Christmas stockings empty, says Jill. We know that too, I say, but what can we do? We can't deliver the presents. Why not, says Jill. Because we're not Santa, I say. Where's his sleigh, says Jill. Up there, says Terry, pointing to where it is tittering dangerously on the edge of the level it crashed on. Great, says Jill, and I can see Santa's sack of presents is still in the back. We can deliver them for him. But how will we get all the reindeer out of the tree, I say. Their antlers are all tangled up in the branches. We can grab them with the grabinator, says Terry. It can grab anything from anywhere at any time. But it would have to grab them very carefully, I say, and that will take too long. I agree, says Jill. I think we should use my flying cats instead and get the reindeer down later, after we've delivered all the presents. Well, what are we waiting for, I say. Let's go. Hang on a minute, says Jill. We can't deliver presents dressed like this. We need to look more Christmassy. This sounds like a job for the Disguise-O-Matic 5000, I say. If you like most of our readers, you probably know that the Disguise-O-Matic 5000 is part of our high-tech detective agency. It has a disguise for every occasion, including a full range of Christmas costumes. We climb as fast as we can to the detective agency, go through to the extensive security protocols to get in and head straight to the Disguise-O-Matic 5000. Jill chooses a Santa suit and puts it on. She walks around patting her belly and saying, Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! How can you get to be Santa? says Terry. Well, says Jill, I figure since my cats are pulling the sleigh and I'll be driving, I should be Santa. You two can be my helper elves. I don't want to be a helper elf, says Terry, who's put on a spiky armoured suit. I'm going to be a helper orc instead. Roar! There's no such thing as helper orcs, says Jill. Orcs are horrible, not helpful. What about a helper vampire, says Terry, creeping towards me in a long black cloak. I want to suck your blood, he says, lunging at my neck with his big fake fangs. Quit it, I say. I don't want my blood sucked and I don't want to be a helper elf any more than you do. But vampires can't deliver presents. Why not? Because it's Christmas, not Halloween. Good point, says Terry. I'll be a helper killer robot instead. Kill, crush, destroy. That's even worse, Terry, says Jill. Killing, crushing and destroying isn't going to help us deliver presents. It's just going to make a big mess. Does the disguise matic 5000 have any help or elf suits? Unfortunately, yes, I say. Here they are, one for you, Terry, and one for me. We put on our costumes. They are green and red, and the shoes have long, curly toes. And as if that's not bad enough, our hats have ribbons and bells on them. We look ridiculous, I say. Look on the bright side, says Terry. At least nobody will see us. They'll all be asleep. Let's hope so, I say. Ho, 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 says Jill, practicing her Santa laugh. Again, you both look very Christmassy. Come on, let's get going. We return to the level where Santa crashed and pull the sleigh back from the edge. <sighs> 
Terry reaches into the sleigh and pulls out a very long paper scroll. Look at this, he says. It's Santa's list. That's just what we need, I say. It tells us exactly where to go and who gets which presents. We should get going right away, says Jill. It's almost midnight and we have a lot to do. Jill hitches her cats to the sleigh and we all climb in. OK, hold tight everybody, says Jill. Now, Silky, Scratchy, Scary and Blurry, Tinkerbell, Crashy, Slashy, Trashy and Purry, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now fly away, fly away, fly away all. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. The cats all flap their wings and the sleigh rises into the air, but then it bumps back down onto the deck. Bump! What's the matter? I say. Why aren't we flying? I think the sleigh is too heavy for my cats, says Jill. Never fear, says Terry, pointing. Look, Class Chicks is here. As well as being a stunt axolotl, he's very strong. He can provide the extra stunt axolotl sleigh pulling power we need. Hola, Feliz Navidad. Jill attaches Class Chicks to the harness alongside Silky and then climbs back into the sleigh. Hang on a minute, I say. We can't go yet. Silky and Quaschix don't have glowing red noses like Rudolph. We won't be able to see where we're going. No problem, says Terry. I have an emergency can of glow-in-the-dark red paint. It's not long before Silky and Quaschix's freshly painted noses are glowing brightly. I think we're ready now, says Jill. Now, Silky, Scratchy, Scary and Blurry, Tinkerbell, Crashy, Slashy, Trashy and Purry, and Quasjex, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now fly away, fly away, fly away, all ho, ho, ho. And up and away we fly into the sky. Chapter 10, Around the World. We fly through the air, through the dark evening mist, delivering presents to all on the list. No present too big, no present too small, no present too heavy. We deliver them all. We put them in pillow slips, stockings and sacks. We arrange them in piles and towering stacks, t-shirts and sweaters. Joxes and Soxes, Building Block Sets, and Jackson Boxes, Toy Trucks and Dress Ups, Tea Sets and Trains, Pencils and Paint Sets, Puzzles and Games. We take them to children in houses and flats, houseboats and cottages. Chalets and shacks, remote desert islands and small country towns. Skyscraper the cities and homes underground, houses on stilts, huts made of bamboo, adobes and igloos, and tree houses too. And as we go, we cross off the names George and Aisha and Henry and James, Toby, Sabrina, Oscar and Pearl, Jacob and Sio Yun, Elijah and Earl, Ivy and Dillon, Lulu and Mac, Enya and Evan, Jasper and Jack, Casper and Cadence, Edward and Lenny, Jonah and Jules, Riley and Penny, Ifamelu and Born, Astrid and Inger, Michael, Anna, Carl and Christina, Lily and Ella, Eve and Minjan, 
Jessica, Don, Jiho and Hajun, Sam and Milan, Lotte and Fleur, Santosh and Sunil, Billy and Pear, Petro and Ping, Olga and Tatiana, Perry and Ivan, Dirk and Svetlana, Joshua and Samuel, Giovanni and Matteo, William and Charlie, Justin and Theo, Nani and Seren, Otis and Vasha, Banjo and Dogel, Kiara and Sasha, Rafal and Rufus, Z and Mayuko, Sleevely and Kalila, Harun and Haruto, Ethan and Ian, Paris and Elle, Declan, Sophia, Santiago and Belle. Finally, we delivered the very last gift to the very last child on Santa's long list. A shiny new xylophone for Zoe Zigorzopoulos, which, as you can imagine, is a great relief for all of us. And I think to myself, as daylight draws near, no wonder Santa does this just one time a year. But although we're tired, we're as happy as we can be, for soon it will be Christmas Day, and we'll be back home in our tree. <sighs> Chapter 11 Reindeer Recovery Jill points the sleigh towards the treehouse. Fortunately, Zo Zigazopolis doesn't live too far from us, so we're home in almost no time. It's easy to tell our tree apart from all the other trees in the forest, as well as the fact that it has a Christmas light on every leaf. It's the only tree with reindeer in the branches. Jill lands the sleigh on our observation deck. Well, that was fun, she says. Now let's untangle those poor reindeer. I'm on it, says Terry, jumping onto the cockpit of the grabinator. I'll set it to super dainty grabbing so I don't hurt any of them. The grabinator daintily grabs Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Comet and Vixen and Cupid and Donna and Blitzen and, of course, Rudolph. There we go, says Terry, all safe and sound. It's so nice to meet you, Rudolph, says Jill. Sorry we had to leave in the tree, but time was very tight. Rudolph nuzzles her face, which although I don't speak reindeer, I'm pretty sure that means that's okay, I understand. Wow, says Terry, that's Rudolph, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. I know, I say, it's so exciting to see such a famous reindeer in the flesh. And look at that nose, it really does glow. It sure does, says Jill, and it's also going to help us identify the real Santa. How, I say, if Quizzy the Quizzical Quizbot can figure out which one was real, what makes you think a reindeer will be able to do it? Well, says Jill, reindeer have an excellent sense of smell, and Rudolph's red nose not only glows, it's also super sensitive. He'll sniff out the true Santa Claus in no time. We lead Rudolph to the quiz level, where the Santas are all still lying in a big pile. Rudolph walks slowly around the Santas, sniffing loudly. Finally, he stops and nudges one. Help! The Santa doesn't stir. Rudolph nudges again, more roughly this time and licks the Santa's face. The Santa opens his eyes, blinks, gets to his feet and gives Rudolph a big hug. It's good to see you, Rudolph, you old rascal, says Santa. Thanks for waking me up. Oh my goodness, look at the time. We have to get going. These children need their presents. 
Relax, Santa, I say. It's all taken care of. Jill Terry and I delivered the rest of the presents for you. All of them? says Santa. Yes, says Terry. Every last one. Even Zoe Ziegler Zopolis' xylophone? Of course, says Jill. How can I ever thank you, says Santa. You don't have to thank us at all, says Terry. We had a great time. I'm glad to hear it, says Santa. I'm just sorry I crashed and put you to so much trouble. The crash wasn't your fault, I say. It was the puddles. Puddle? says Jill. What puddle? The puddle that used to be the Christmas snowman, says Terry. And he melted it with a flamethrower. That doesn't sound very Christmassy, says Santa. Well, it wasn't a very Christmassy snowman, says Terry. It threw its head at Andy and then tried to crush us both with its body. You can read all about it in our book. Our book? I say. We're supposed to deliver it today, but we haven't even written it. Our book? Why don't we write it now, says Terry. After everything that's happened, we've got a lot to write about. You can say that again, says Jill. After everything that's happened, we've got a lot to write about, says Terry. We sure have, I say. Let's get started right away. Chapter 12. Ho, ho, ho. And so we do. We write and draw and draw and write and draw and write and write and draw and write and write and draw and draw and draw and write and write until it's all finished. I'm glad that's done, says Terry. Now all we have to do is get it to Mr. Big Nose. I can drop it off on my way back to the North Pole, says Santa. It can be his Christmas present. Thanks, Santa, I say. But Mr. Big Nose doesn't believe in Christmas. Oh, we'll see about that, says Santa, smiling. Santa hitches his reindeer to the sleigh and climbs in. Merry Christmas, he booms and he whooshes off. We all wave goodbye. We follow the telescope on our observation deck to follow Santa's flight to Big Nose Books. We see Santa land on the roof of Mr. Big Nose books and squeeze himself and a manuscript down the chimney. Fortunately, a telescope has a long-range microphone as well, so we can listen in. Ho, 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 says Santa as he climbs out of the fireplace. Merry Christmas, Mr. Big Nose. Who the dickens are you? splutters Mr. Big Nose, and what do you mean by bursting into my office like this and covering everything in a cloud of soot? I'm Santa Claus, says Santa, and I've brought you a present. A present? says Mr. Big Nose. I haven't got time for presents. I'm a busy man. But it's Christmas Day. I don't care what day it is, says Mr. Big Nose. I'm busy, and I'm definitely too busy for presents. I don't think you're too busy for this one, says Santa. It's from Andy and Terry. Well, why didn't you say so, says Mr. Big Nose, snatching it off Santa. It's exactly what I wanted, but how did you know about that? Oh, I know a lot about presents, says Santa. What did you say your name was again? says Mr. Big Nose. Santa, says Santa. Santa Claus. The Santa Claus? says Mr. Big Nose. 
The one and only, says Santa. I thought you were just a made-up storybook character. Oh, I hope not, says Santa, chuckling and patting his big round belly. Is it true that you fly around and deliver presents to children all over the world in a single night? says Mr. Big Nose. Yes, says Santa. Every Christmas Eve I spend the rest of the year in my North Pole workshop making toys with the elves. My goodness, says Mr. Big Nose, and I thought I was busy. I think we have a lot in common, you and me. Would you like a drink? Milk, please, says Santa. With ice, says Mr. Big Nose. No, thanks. There's more than enough ice where I'm going. Ho, ho, ho! Have you ever considered writing a book about your life, says Mr. Big Nose? Funny you should ask, says Santa. I've just finished doing exactly that. It's called The Story of the Autobiography of My Life by Me, Santa, and the True Meaning of Christmas. Great title, says Mr. Big Nose. I'd love to read it. As a matter of fact, I have a copy right here, says Santa. He pulls it out from inside his jacket and hands it to Mr. Big Nose. I was about to start looking for a publisher. Well... You've just found one, says Mr. Big Nose. Two books in one day. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas here at Big Nose Books. That's because it is Christmas, says Santa. Would you like another glass of milk, says Mr. Big Nose? No, I have to be getting back to the North Pole, says Santa, heading for the chimney. Mrs. Claus and the elves are expecting me for Christmas lunch. Then I wish you a very Merry Christmas, says Mr. Big Nose, and thanks for the book, I mean books. Merry Christmas to you too, calls Santa as he disappears up the chimney. I'm glad that all worked out so well, says Terry, but after a night of delivering presents, I'm really hungry. Me too, says Jill. Let's get ready for lunch. Everyone will be here soon. Not so fast, says a voice. We have unfinished business. Chapter 13. The Last Chapter. We look down. Yep, you guessed it, it's the puddle. How interesting, says Jill, crouching down to study it more closely. A talking puddle. That's the one we are telling you about, says Terry, the not very Christmassy snowman puddle. I won't get too close if I were you. It's not very nice and it's that never-ending revenge on us. But before Jill can move away, the puddle rises up, grabs her around the waist and drags her in. Let me go, yells Jill. Not until Andy and Terry agree to get out of my treehouse, it yells back. That's not going to happen, I say. Let her go or we'll stomp you so hard you'll be nothing but water vapor. Stomp me and you'll stomp Jill, says the puddle. And you don't want that, do you? No, I don't, I say. That does it. Now you've gone too far. Not as far as you're going, replies the puddle. Now hurry up and leave or I'll drown your little animal-loving pal here. You won't be drowning anybody and we're not going anywhere, says Terry. In fact, it's you who's leaving, and very soon, too. Terry grabs our endlessly expandable Christmas stockings from the fireplace and throws one to me. Ooh, I'm so scared of your stockings, says the puddle sarcastically. You should be, says Terry. These endlessly expandable Christmas stockings are also endlessly super absorbent. Goodbye, or should I say good dry, forever. Terry throws his stocking onto the puddle and I do the same. 
the stockings immediately begin to soak up the puddle. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You'll pay for this, you stinking, puddle-shrinking fiends, says the now tiny puddle. You haven't heard the last of me. Actually, I think we have, I say, as the last drop is absorbed and Jill is left lying safe and sound on the now perfectly dry carpet. Yay, says Jill, jumping to her feet. I'm not only free, but I'm completely dry as well. The stockings really work. Thank you. Don't mention it, says Terry. That's what friends and endlessly expandable super absorbent Christmas stockings are for. I'm glad the stockings were useful for getting rid of that horrible snowman's puddle, says Terry. But I'm a bit sad that they weren't filled with presents like we'd hoped. Yeah, I say. We didn't get any presents at all. Santa forgot about us. I don't think that's true, says Jill. Look over there, beside the fireplace. We look. Jill's right. There are three large presents. One for Terry, one for Jill, and one for me. Santa didn't forget after all, says Terry. Let's open them, I say. I can't wait to see what we got. Wow, says Terry. I got an electric pony. Me too, I say. So did I, says Jill. I'm going to call mine lightning, says Terry. I'm going to call mine flash drive, I say. I'm going to call mine apple dumpling, says Jill. Apple dumpling, I say. What sort of a name is that for an electric pony? It's a really good name, says Jill. I got it out of this book. Really good names for electric ponies. Let's take them for a ride, I say. I jump on flash drive and flick the starter switch. He roars into life. Go flash drive! Hee-haw! Wait, says Jill. What about lunch? All my animals have been so looking forward to it. In fact, they'll be all arriving any minute now. Of course, I say. You're absolutely right. Christmas lunch first, electric pony flying second. Terry, can you set the table for an extra three electric ponies and all the Santa clones and let Edward Scooperhands know that we are going to need at least 50 times more ice cream? Sure thing, Andy, says Terry. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. Going to be, I say. It already is. Ring, 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 ring. Oh no, I say. It's Mr. Big Nose. What could he possibly want? He's already got our book. Yeah, leave us alone, you big old poopy head, says Terry. Shush, I whisper to Terry. He might hear you, but it's too late. I beg your pardon, Terry, says Mr. Big Nose. Did he just call me a big old poopy head? Yes, says Terry quickly, but only because Andy told me to say that. No, I didn't, I say. Did, says Terry. Didn't, I say. It's okay, says Mr. Big Nose. It doesn't matter who said it. I'm afraid I have been a bit of a big old poopy head and I'm calling to apologize and to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. But I thought you didn't believe in Christmas, I say. I didn't, he said, not until I met Santa and read his book. I now see I was wrong. There's a time for work and a time for play and definitely a time for Christmas, which is why I have all of my family here at Big Nose Books for the first annual Big Nose Books Christmas Party. The filing monster taps Mr. Big Nose on the shoulder. Excuse me, Mr. Big Nose, 
He says, I'm going to need a bigger pedro for all these presents. I have to go, says Mr. Big Nose. I've got a pedro emergency on my hands. Have a very busy, I mean, have a very merry Christmas or else. Merry Christmas to you too, Mr. Poopy. Oops, I mean Mr. Big Nose, says Terry. Don't worry about it, I say. He's already gone, but everyone else is here. Let's turn on the sandwich machine and get this party started. This is so much fun, says Terry. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Me too, I say. Hey, I know. Let's build a Santa Land level for all the Santa clones to live in. Then we can have Christmas whenever we feel like it. If you're adding more levels, says Jill, can one be a stable with fast charging stations and automatic hoof polishers for our electric ponies? Of course, I say. And speaking of electric ponies, Let's take them for a spin before they eat too many Christmas sandwiches and get too full to fly. Yay, says Terry. Up, up and away. The End 169 Story Treehouse under construction. 13 new levels soon. Santa Land level coming soon.